Good morning, everyone. As I explained yesterday, we are beginning our final unit of study on argumentative writing. And arguing is something we do all the time. We argue about what to eat for dinner, what to watch for TV, who to vote for in the elections, who's the best sports team, whether Pluto is a planet, which state has the worst drivers, and why you should be able to get a puppy during a quarantine. While some of these argument topics are obviously funny um, and a little silly, the ability to craft a good argument can also be a survival skill. It can help you get a job, it can save your relationship, and it can help you defend yourself in a legal situation, whether you've done something wrong or not. Arguing is an art form. There's no, uh, there's specific vocabulary related to argumentation. And there are certain techniques that I'm gonna teach you in order to become better at arguing. I'm also going to highlight some techniques that are popular to use, but are actually signs of a really bad argument. So in week one of our study, we are going to go over important argument vocabulary and the structure of an argument. Each day, I'm gonna ask you to read or watch a different argument and to identify its structure. Then next week, we'll you'll start responding to these arguments by experimenting with the different structures. And finally, in week three, you're going to craft your own argument about some topic that's important to you or that's relevant in the world right now. So let's get started. Um, I would like you to open your argument writing Google Doc and take notes on this next part of the lecture. And of course, um, focusing your notes using highlighting or underlining or making little connections or questions out in the margins are always helpful. Um, you can do this on your Google Doc using the highlighting, the underlining function, or the comment function. So yesterday, I asked you to think of the last argument you had. I asked you to answer the following questions. What was the point you were trying to make? What reasons did you give for your point? And what reasons did the other person provide? And who ultimately won the argument? A bunch of you gave some great examples and all your arguments, all good arguments have specific components. So I wanna go over this essential vocabulary. Um, starting with the claim. The claim is the point you are trying to make. It's, it's the position that you're taking on any topic. So for example, I made a claim about a month ago that we should get a puppy. Your claim is always introduced in the beginning of your ar argument, whether you are writing or speaking. And just like the thesis in analytical writing, your claim is the most important part of your argument. Everything else is going to go back to that claim. Following your claim, what do you think you need? Support, duh. A claim by itself is not going to convince anybody of anything. And the body of your argument will follow a pattern much like the three C's in analytical, in analytical writing. So let's do a side-by-side -side comparison here with some new vocabulary comparing argumentative writing to analytical writing. We already went over what a claim and thesis are. They're both the most important parts of your essay. Um, claim, similar to a thesis, is the point you're trying to make. Um, in analytical writing, you're making a claim about how the author uses literary devices, like how they use tone or imagery. You're not really critiquing how the author crafts the argument here. You're looking at their main point. Next up, following your claim, you need to have reasons that support it. These are just specific points or facts that support your claim. Much like the context in analytical writing. Following your reason, you need evidence. You gotta back it up. People aren't just gonna take your word for it even though you may have a good reason because they may have their own good reasons as well. Evidence consists of facts, statistics, or anecdotal data that proves your reason. If something is anecdotal, that means it's from personal experience. So somebody saw someone do something, they're the only witness, that would be anecdotal evidence. It's very, very similar to content in the three C's, which is your textual evidence. 
ultimately all of this goes back to support your main point. Finally, um, just like the connection in analytical writing is the most important part of a body paragraph, your warrant is the most important part of an argument body paragraph. Your warrant is an explanation in your own words of how your evidence supports your reasoning, which ultimately goes back to support your claim. It's where you're going to make connections to the reader in hopes that they're going to believe what you say. So just like a body paragraph in an analytical essay is structured using the three C's, a body paragraph in an argumentative essay is structured using R, E, W, reason, evidence, and warrant. Also, like any other essay, your argument is going to end with the conclusion, a restatement of the claim, and a memorable line to really hammer that point home and convince your readers or listeners of your point. So go ahead and finish taking notes. If you have not done so already, you can pause and then continue the video. Today, I want you to read a short piece called The Ugly Truth About Beauty by Dave Barry. I want you to read it first, then I'd like you to listen to me read it for the second time so that you can pick up on the sarcastic tone of this piece. There's, there's definitely a lot of sarcasm and exaggeration here. He's not being totally serious, although there is a, there is a grain of truth in most of what he says. Um, and he is ultimately making an argument. So after you read the first time, I want you to go to your argument writing doc and label today's heading the ugly truth about beauty, followed by the numbers one through four. And as you listen to the argument again, reread it again, I want you to identify four things for me. Um, this should say what, not hat. Number one, what is Barry's claim in this argument? Remember, Barry is the author. Two, what is one reason Barry uses to support his claim? Three, what evidence does Barry give to support that reason? And four, how does Barry provide a warrant to explain the significance of his evidence and ultimately support his reason? For numbers one through four, you can give me your specific sentence from the text, or you can just paraphrase it in your own words. Either is fine. We will review possible answers in tomorrow's video lesson. Don't stress if you're having a hard time identifying things. This is practice. This is the first time we're doing this. We're going to go over it tomorrow and we're going to continue looking at different types of argument over the week so that by Friday, you will be experts in identifying the different parts of an argument. So give it your best go. Um, remember to read it at least twice and you're doing everything on your argument Google Doc and check out the link with um, the Zoom conference and the password if you need help later today.